Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so happy to see everyone here today. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a wonderful session planned for you today. And before we jump in, I just want to get to um, meet the group a little bit. I hope you have been able to locate your chat. And uh, we will be asking just a few questions just to, before we get started to see which what the group looks like today. So let's get started. I want to ask um, my languages are English, Spanish. Those are the languages I interpret with. If you guys can use the chat, let me know if you're also English, Spanish. Let me know if you're English, Spanish. I'm hearing Teresa is saying she can't hear. Can the rest of you guys hear okay? Perfect. Okay, great. All right. So go ahead and use the chat if you're also an English Spanish interpreter. I want to hear from you guys. Perfect. Awesome. We got some English Spanish interpreters here. Those of you who are not English Spanish, if you could use the chat, let me know what your language combination is. We have any other combinations? Arabic. Awesome. Arabic English, I presume. Great. Do we have anybody else other than English, Spanish, or English and Arabic? Okay. Great. Now let's talk about the fields of interpretation that you guys have worked in. I am a court interpreter. I also do medical interpretation and conference interpretation. Do we have anybody else? Any other, uh, other fields? Let's kind of get to see who's doing what. Virginia, I don't think the chat is working. Ah, no wonder I don't hear from you guys. Okay, well, the chat is not working, so we're going to go ahead and proceed without that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little refresher of what we did last time, and then we're going to go ahead and resume for when we left off. Okay, so here we go. Let me make sure. Let me get my slideshow in order. Okay, great. And last time we left off in this slide. Okay, we can pick up from here. Let's see if my slideshow will collaborate today. Okay, great. So basically this whole month we are talking to you guys about Interpretrain's three-step method. And basically the goal of this course, we, this is our second session, uh, we're going to be having four sessions, and the goal is to empower you to study smart. We want you to be able to make the best of use of your time and the best use of your resources so you can accomplish your professional goals and you can pass those tests that you've been meaning to pass. So you're going to be, we're going to empower you on these fronts. We want you to be able to train and develop your consecutive skills, sight translation, simultaneous, and also your vocabulary. So those are the fronts we're going to be working on and we're going to teach you how to get the best out of your time and the best out of your material, whether you're training with our material or you're training on your own. We're going to teach you both. And Virginia, okay. um, since the chat isn't working, if um, participants can raise their hand, if they okay. have a question, we'll do our best to unmute them and answer their questions. Yes, thank you so much, Brad. If you guys have a question, please go ahead and raise your hand. And uh, of course, not your physical hand, but the actual in the system. And then we'll be able to see it and hopefully we'll be able to get to your question. Thank you so much for that, Brad. Okay, so last time we were talking about Interpretrain's three-step method. How the first step is you tackle the vocabulary. The second step is you move on to the interpretation. And then the final step, you carry out the evaluation. And we were talking about why we do this. To interpret accurately, you have to be able to get into a flow. But if you face unknown vocabulary, that can mess up your flow. So when you start focusing, understanding the message, and accurately expressing the meaning, you bump into vocabulary that you don't know, and that throws you off balance. So the more terms you don't know, the harder it is to get your groove back. And to interpret accurately, you will be able, you will have to multitask efficiently. So 
we talked about this metaphor of the juggling acro the acrobatic juggling metaphor in which the interpreter is on this tight rope on a motorcycle and juggling balls in the air and the tight rope has to be like the vocabulary it has to be your sturdy ground you have to have native command of both languages you have to have mastery of the specialized vocabulary and then on top of that we're juggling the interpreting skills you have to have a high level of comprehension, speed for the simultaneous mode, accuracy, and cultural competency. So the whole method is based on the idea that for us to master any complex task, the most effective approach is to divide and conquer. So that's exactly what we've done. You're going to sub tackle each subtask separately until you ace it, and then you're going to go ahead and try them together. So basically, that's what the three-step method does. That's what we covered last time in a nutshell. And now we're going to move on to what we're going to be talking about this time. Let me go to slide number 58. Here we go. So last time, I set you guys some homework to go ahead and work on step number one. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to step number two. Actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and stop my share so we look at some options that we have for step number one, because I want to empower you guys to create your own tools if you're not going to be working with our materials. So let me go ahead and share that screen with you guys. Beautiful. Here I am in our third step which I'm going to be hopefully getting to today. But before we get there, let me go ahead and move here. Okay, so we talked about the first step. Whether you're studying with our material or you're studying on your own, it's always good to have several tools to drill the vocabulary. So when you finally get to the place of second step of interpreting, the vocabulary is in the bag and it won't trip you up. The first thing that we have are the slides. You're basically going to be working with the vocabulary where you have the term on the front of the card and then a sentence in the source language. And then you go to the next one, you have the term, source language term, target language terms, and the sentence in the target language has been translated. So you can go ahead and read that translated sentence. It's always good to read out loud. You can create flashcards like this for your own, and we're going to go into that. Uh, the next session, we're going to be covering site translation. In the last session, we're going to be seeing how you can study with your own tools if you're not going to work with interpreters tools. But if you're creating your own cards, it's a good idea to try to put the term at the top and a sentence at the bottom. Now, when you're working with a new term, it's always good to find one, only one target language equivalent. We put several here in case our students already knew a, a different one, they wouldn't think they were wrong. But when you're learning new vocabulary, don't challenge yourself to learn three and four and five vocab units. What you want is just one and move on. Okay, and you can work with these flashcards. You can go ahead and try to time yourself, go through the flashcards as fast as you can by reading this atop, reading the sentence, and then interpret it, and then flipping the card. On the back side, you would have this only one, one target language equivalent here, and the translated sentence. If you get that card right, you're going to put it on your right side. If you get that card wrong, you're put, going to put it on your left side. When you're finished, you're going to take all the cards on the left pile and you're going to go ahead and drill those until you learn them automatically. Another cool thing is just learn the top word. Don't worry about the sentence. Once you have context and you've been able to memorize sentences that give you a nice context to the meaning, you can go ahead and move on to just words. So we would be doing, for example, like this, party, parte, perfect, incur, incurrir. And we would just be focusing on the top word and again, timing ourselves and trying to beat our own records. So that's the Virginia, first. We have a question. Um, yes. From I, I, uh, Carlos, I believe. I'm not sure of the name exactly. And we, we um, opened up your mic, Carlos. You, rose, you raised your hand. You have a question? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> all right. Okay, Carlos, I'm, welcome. Uh, hi, hi. Just, I'm making sure that I'm here in attendance, that's all. all right. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Nice to have you. Thank you. And everyone is here, including uh, Betty. She's our canine uh, oh. mascot. Oh, Betty's here, too. <laughs> and Betty she's Rose joining Rapport. us. You can see she's joining yeah. us as well. Yeah. So you won't get scared if you see an animal behind me. So, yeah, definitely. So this is how, thank you, Brad, for keeping uh, track of the people who raise their yeah. hands. So you're going to be, this is like a speed way of doing with your cards. Okay, another tool that we have are audios. If you use our audios, you'll notice that there are um, moments where there's a silence. 
it is during those silence that you're going to go ahead and chime in. If you're going to hear a word and then a sentence that, that uses that word, and you'll notice that between, you can probably see here, between the sound waves, there are little pauses, little silences, and that's your opportunity to interpret. When you're working with our material, you can use it on the go, you can use it to multitask while you're doing other things. If you're working on your own, you can go ahead and record your own audio cards in the same fashion that I described. You're going to say the, target, the source language term, leave a little space, and then the target language term. And that's how you create your own flash, your own audio cards, and you can use them while you're doing other things. We have the target practice tool, which allows you to just zone in and target in on those things that you're interested in. So we're gonna reset it and start from fresh. Let's say I've already practiced with my vocab, and I Virginia, wanna go can ahead. You go, can you enlarge your screen for this? Absolutely, thanks for Great. reminding me. Is that a little better? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, can you go a little larger? Or... Ah, let me try. See if we can. Larger. <laughs> Make me larger. Is that good? All right. Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. So we can go ahead and, and focus on the terms that we want to zone in on. We can target in on those terms. So let's say I'm still working on the word target. I'm sorry, the word docket. So I reveal it. First, I interpret it before revealing it. Let's say I'm still working on the word non-binding. I interpret it, then I reveal it. And then let's say there's one more that I wanna work on. Let's say alleviate pain. I first interpret it, then I reveal it, and then I submit it and it's going to isolate those terms for me. So then you can go ahead and practice this. You can say, okay, docket, lista de causas. Got it right. Non-binding, no vinculante. Got it right. And alleviate, alleviate pain, aliviar dolor. Very good. Oh, I didn't mark it. I mark it as correct, and then I finish, and it's going to congratulate me for having done such an awesome job Yay. with my vocab. So that's that's another tool that that we have. But if you're working on your own, there's a tool that I want you to create. Here we have some drills, and we have different options with the drills. Um, you can play a memory game which allows you to do the same thing I was talking about. Say this out loud, for example, arbitrar. Then I show the answer. I got it right. So it's almost like dividing them up into different piles. Okay. Um, arbitration, arbitraje. I got it right. If I had gotten one wrong, let's say court, I say cordial. And I show the answer. I got it wrong. And it's going to keep track. Okay. So I'll know exactly what needs work. We also have quizzes. Okay. We have the word here at the top. And then we can choose which ones of these it is. And it gives you automatic feedback. Okay, and one of my favorites we have is the match game, where we take things that belong together and we make sure that we put them the blue. And so, for example, arbitration would go here, and if they belong together, they disappear until they're done. But when you're creating your own material, one of the things that you can do is you can go ahead and create your list. And the first step you're going to do, and we're going to go further into this in the last session, how to study on your own without our material. But the first thing you would do is you would go ahead and look at the transcript and you would go ahead and underline the terms that you're not too comfortable with, the terms that you think still need a little work. Then from that list of terms from your transcript, you're going to go ahead and look up those terms, make sure you find one equivalent and you're going to write them on the side. Or you can just create a list like this, where on the left side, you have the source language term, and on the right side, you have the other term, the target language term. And you can cover one side when you have finished writing out your list and, and consulting dictionaries and written out your full list, and you have all the target language equivalents, you're going to cover the right side of the page so you can focus on the left side of the page, meaning the source language terms, out loud, interpret, and then discover reveal it to see if you got it right or wrong. So this is a tool that I really recommend that you that you use if you're working on your own. Okay? And Virginia, I just wanted to make an announcement for a lot of folks came in just now. So our chat is not working. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand, the Zoom hand, not your actual hand. Yes, <laughs> we don't want to leave you hanging. Thanks, Brad. That's very important. Okay, so that basically covers step one. And that's what we saw last time. These are tools that you can use on our system or to create on your own. The more tools, the better. And it's always a good idea to get into the habit of studying during your day. One of the biggest mistakes people make is that they have a misconception of what studying is. They think I'm going to sit down and only study for two hours a day. 
we're really busy and often you're not able to keep up that rhythm. So many people study for a week or two, those who have a lot of um, determination and discipline study for a month and then it stops. But if we learn to study in a way that we take better advantage of our time, that we use our time more productively, we can get a lot more study in there. So that means that you're going to carry this material with you and you're going to study, whether it's our stuff or your own, study step one, any chance you get. You'll be amazed how much free time we have in a day. If you're an interpreter, especially, we're waiting around a lot for our cases to start. Or when the cases end, sometimes we're at the office and nothing is happening. Use those times to study the vocab. So when you sit down and do step two, the vocab is in the bag and you've already gained a lot, a, a lot of uh, terrain, okay? And then we move on to the actual work that we want to do, which is your interpretation. And I'm going to go back to the slideshow to talk a little bit about the interpretation. So let me stop my share. Let me go back to my screen. Beautiful. And let me go ahead. Here we are. So when it comes to step two, the actual interpretation, there are some guidelines that I want to give you that will really help and go a long way. And I want you to have them in mind today because we are going to be interpreting today. So You'll be working with real court cases. We're going to give you recommendations of free materials that are real court cases. And of course, our material is based on real court cases. Only the identifying information has been changed. So you can be sure that these are things that are relevant, okay? Now, the most important thing when you're studying for step number two is to voice record your interpreting practice. Make sure you voice record yourself and we're actually in step three going to listen to that practice. We advise that you use a digital recording device. You can use your smartphone, your tablet, a digital recorder. If you use our app, you'll notice that step three is much, much easier. And there's a little trick. Sometimes if your phone is programmed to uh, time out, you can go ahead to on your settings and tell your screen to not lock out. So it won't, the, the, the app will continue recording, okay? So some tips for step two. When you're doing step number two, that is showtime. That is not the time to stop. That is not the time to, oh, let me go ahead and do this again. Let me start the recording again. No. Imagine that you're on, on um, stage and you're in front of the world and you show must go on no matter what. You don't stop. Once you start, you keep going. Even if the chat doesn't work? <laughs> Even if the chat doesn't work, you have to keep going no matter what. The show must go on. Once you start, don't stop, okay? If you do know a term, you do your best. If you got nothing, you say the term in the source language or you skip it. But once you begin step two, don't stop. Keep interpreting no matter what happens, okay? And last time we also talked about the importance of repetition. Most people don't understand the importance of repeating. The best thing for you to do is do the current lab you're working with at least three times. And make sure that you do it. We offer it in usually in the consecutive mode and the simultaneous mode if the practice allows, according to the type of practice. And then we also offer it at different speeds. Brad is going to share with you a tool that you can use to slow down a practice or speed up a practice. So we'll be sharing with you in our blog. We have uh, tools, free practices that are the Supreme Court has um, posted. They have both the transcript and the audio recordings. You can take those audio recordings and you can slow them out, down or speed them up. If you wanna do the consecutive interpretation, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be having a study buddy be your DJ and you're going oh, to be that, putting your hand up. Yes. That is working, yay. Oh, that's awesome. Let's see. I'll, I'll share those links now. Yay, that's awesome. Okay, wonderful. So Brad is going to be sharing with you. Hi, Michelle from Oklahoma. Okay, Brad is going to be sharing with you um, the free tools. If you go to our website, you go to our blog, you'll notice that we have, create, we have shared with you both the Supreme Court link and uh, a mock exam by the New Jersey Council by the by the Judicial Council of New Jersey. So I want you guys to go up to for just one moment. Make let's not. Um, I do want you to guys keep chiming in on the chat, but just for now, so it doesn't keep going down. Let's stop 
the, the chatting for a moment and, and, and entering anything to the chat so you guys can copy these two links, okay? You'll notice Brad shared um, the free I'll practices. Share I'll share it again. By New Jersey and also uh, free interpreting practices um, from, for you guys to work with. If, you, if you're not gonna work with our material. And secondly, I want Brad or thirdly to share that app that allows you to slow down. It's, it's a, com a compilation of different apps that allow you to slow down your practice or speed up your practice. But, I'll post that in a couple minutes. Perfect, thank you, Brad. But the name of the game is repetition. So you do want to go ahead and repeat, whether it's because you're doing it in the simultaneous mode and then in the consec, or because you're doing it within each mode at different speeds. It is repetition that is going to get you the results that you love, okay? Repetition lets you squeeze every last drop out of each interpreting practice. Some students think that repeating the same practice is like cheating. Nothing could be farther from the truth. This misconception is probably responsible for many failed interpreting tests. Okay, when you're not familiar with the practice, your, your brain is preoccupied with the un, how to handle the unexpected elements. Other than learning to improvise, you're not significantly building your interpretation skills. On the other hand, when you interpret a practice repeatedly, you get to know its components. And after the second try, that's when the magic happens. Okay, it is precisely when you're not distracted by the unknown that you can focus exclusively on polishing your skills. And we know that you'll love the results that repetition brings. Okay, so that's that now i think we can talk a little bit with the group now that we have our chat up and going now let's try it again that let's sounds see. like fun <laughs> let's see um how many people we have english spanish go ahead and use the chat you can say me 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 wow we have a lot of english spanish combos beautiful excellent 5350 wow 70 awesome okay now let's see if we have anybody else who is not English Spanish. Go ahead and put your other language, Arabic and French, Portuguese, Portuguese, German. Very good. American Sign Language. Awesome. Mandarin, Turkish and French, Romanian, Italian. Oh, nice. Great, great, great. Arabic and French. Ooh. Very good, you guys. Um, let's see about your experience. Um, I have been an interpreter since the year 2003. So that takes me into 17 years. Let's hear for those of you who are between zero months and six months. Go ahead and use the chat. Let me know if you're a beginner. Oh, we have some beginners. Welcome aboard. Awesome. Cool. Uh, for those of you who are beginners, uh, we'll be doing a, something later on to see what the more seasoned interpreters can recommend for you guys. There's always good recommendations. We'll do that at the end. Um, how about people who've been interpreting from six months to let's call it three years? Do we have anybody? Okay, okay. We have about three years on and off. Perfect. Okay. Let's go from three to five years. This is almost like a prison sentence. Three to five. Do I hear three to five? Okay. All right. Oh. How about five to 10? Five to 10. We have a few people, five to 10. Awesome. Awesome. Let's try 10 to 15. Do we have 10 to 15? Yeah. Oh, we have a seasoned group. Such a diversity in this group, that's beautiful. Great, okay. How about from 15 to 20? Do I hear 15 to 20? Zenab, oh my goodness, Zenab's been interpreting for 20 years since she was a baby. Okay, great. Do I hear 20 to 25? 20 to 25? 21, Sonia, ooh, fancy, awesome. Do I hear 25 to 30? 30 years, ooh, look at that. Anybody above 30 years? 30 plus years. Do we have any vampire interpreters that <laughs> have been interpreting? I think we have a few vampire interpreters uh -huh. interpreting for a few centuries. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about fields of interpretation as I mentioned before. Dorian Gray, that's right, Christopher. Um, 
let's talk about interpreting fields. Um, I work, as I said, in the legal field, a little medical, and some conference. How about you guys? Immigration, immigration, court, legal, medical, educational, conference, conference, medical, school, immigration, court. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, great. Um, I want to learn a little bit about what you guys are doing, right? Oh, wiretaps. I won't say who said that. Okay, very good. Um, I want to talk. Some, some, some folks have come in a little later and they're asking about links. We'll, we'll send out those links in, in a follow up email. Every Thank you so much, Brad. That's so important. Yes, we, we, will be, we, will be, we will be making sure everybody gets their links. Don't stress over that. Okay. Good, you guys. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about what you guys are doing right now. Um, can you go ahead and use the chat for those of you who are still working right now, whether you're working from home or whether you're going out and working? Anybody? Okay. There are a few people working. Hmm. Awesome. Remote interpreter sporadically. Okay. Huh. Cool. Well, I'm still going to court. I'm considered one of those essential people. Um, I saw a joke somewhere that essential might mean that they're not too worried if you die. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I am going to court still. Of course, we're all being very careful, but, um, but yeah, you know, it, they need us there. And some courts are already starting to do remote interpreting, so I'm hoping uh, mine will start doing that as well. How about you guys who's, uh, do we have a lot of people working online? Uh, I do put on a mask. If you saw me going to court, you would be a little surprised. I put on a mask. I put on um, these plastic glasses, like for the factory workers that don't get, don't want to get dust in their eyes. I put on an overcoat and I put on gloves and I disinfect everything with wipes. And then when I come home, we have like a decontamination area. So I take off the overcoat. I make sure everything goes in the washer, all my clothes. Then I take a shower and then we step into the house. I think, I think we need to take a picture of you uh, and post that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a little obsessive, but so far so good, knock on wood. So we'll see. Uh, but definitely, if you are going out into the field, I definitely recommend that you, you know, put on your gloves, your, your mask, if you can find glasses as well, keep your distance from people, wipe down anything. If you're working with interpreting equipment, wipe it down between users. I like to rotate my equipment headphones because I've just recently learned that when you disinfect a surface, it takes about four minutes to kill all the germs and bacteria and you know, um, microorganisms. So you want to rotate your headphones between users. You don't want them contaminating each other. I never take off my gloves while I'm in court. And then of course, the proper way to take off your gloves so you're not touching anything. And then I wash my hands when I get home, as I mentioned, clothes go in the washer, I take a shower, and then I'm a little safer. We're not allowing um, shoes in the house as well. So that's another tip. Okay. Uh, what do you use as a disinfectant? I'm using the wipes. I'm using a disinfecting wipes. So I use, I use those. Okay. Um, now, how many of you guys here are still trying to see? Yes, that's a very good point. The pens. I also disinfect the pens that the users are, are using to write for sure. Uh, we have Eva asking a question. If you download the Interpretrain app in one device, are you able to sync the app when you download it into another? I have downloaded the app on my phone and I have two files saved. Can you talk about that, Brad? Uh, I'm going to address that in an email later. Okay, cool. Cool. So we have a, a free voice recording app that you can, that's compatible with our system. So you can very seamlessly put it on your and third that's, step. That's, that's from Eva. Yes. Eva, and can, also, Eva, can you email us, please, with that question? No, just because we do have a lot going on, Eva. And the question is, am I using interpreting equipment? Yes, I do. I use my interpreting equipment. And I disinfect everything before using. And I said, and I, and I disinfect between users and rotate them. So hopefully the, the microorganisms are dead by the time they get it. It's supposed to be four minutes. OK, great. Um, now, um, I also want to talk about testing. Does anybody have, if you could use a chat to let me know what kind of tests you're looking forward to taking. You might not be working on it right now, but you might be expecting to later on. Federal, federal, very good state, written federal, state, AOC, state, 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 
Okay, great, great. And whether you are, we have some medical too, awesome. Um, if you have some, um, if this is not your first time taking the test, don't despair. A lot of people take these tests repeatedly. And I would say that it makes them even better interpreters. I have a lot of colleagues that took a few tries to pass, whether it's the state exam or the federal exam, and it really made them want to be an interpreter even more. And I know really good interpreters that have had to have several tries. But hopefully with these tips that we're going to give you, you're going to be able to ace it very, very quickly. Okay? All right. So let's jump right in. And we're going to go ahead and do our exercise for the day. Let me go ahead and stop my share and start my new share. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and go in here. So for those of you who studied your vocab, we sent you that link. You're going to go ahead and work with what you know. We're also going to give you guys a little time for those of you who want to refresh the vocabulary or you didn't get a chance to study the vocab ahead of time. We're going to give you a little short time. But before we do that, I want to start with a grounding exercise. Now, if you've taken my workshops and or if you were here and or if you were here last time, you'll notice I do a lot of breathing techniques. I do a lot of um, mental exercises. Now, the reason for this is there are, there, there are several reasons for this. It's a multifaceted um, deal. The first thing is when we breathe, we oxygenate our brains. If you could use the chat to let me know what happens to an oxygenated brain. What happens when our brains are nice and oxygenated? How does that affect our interpreting? There's more blood flow. It works better. You think more clearly. You're more relaxed, more, more active. You can concentrate better, better cognitively. Absolutely. When you, are, when you have been breathing right before a practice, you will find that your concentration goes up. You have more memory retrieval. So those words that might get a little um, hard to remember, you will be able to find them better. And you're able to process information much, much faster. These are just to name a few processes. There are many, many other things that are happening when, when, you're, um, when your brain is oxygenated. And yes, Patricia, you are thinking sh in, in, a, in a sharper fashion. The second thing that somebody man uh, mentioned is being relaxed. It's not just a cognitive thing. It is very much an emotional thing. If you are stressed, what happens with your interpretation? Go ahead and use the chat. What happens with our interpreting skills when we're stressed? Carmen says it helps to control nervousness. Absolutely. You forget the words. You blank out. You stutter. You can't remember anything. Your focus is completely out of whack. You're not as sharp. Um, you get stuck on a word. You make mistakes. Absolutely. So when we breathe, we're doing two different things. First, we're oxygenating our brains. And secondly, we're starting off from this emotional point that is peaceful. Later on, we might, hopefully not, but it happens, we might go into our stress again, but at least we started off from that point. And that gives us all the peacefulness to be able to think straight. That gives us all of the clarity, emotional clarity, so we can go ahead and tackle the problems Virginia, in a much stop. more effective fashion. Yes. Can you stop sharing so we can see you? Oh, absolutely. That's very sweet that you want to see me. Okay. <laughs> so, right. so when we, when we are uh, in a calm state emotionally, we're going to have much better uh, flexibility, capacity to deal with mistakes, capacity to gather ourselves. So we're starting off from a point of calm and peace. And that's going to set the tone. The third reason is hopefully when you do this enough, you train yourself, you condition yourself that when you're interpreting, you're in a certain mindset. You're in a certain uh, uh, state of calmness, focus, concentration, and peace. And little by little, that condition will kick in. It will kick, it will kick in in a test, and it will kick in when you're working. Okay, so it's, it's good to do some breathing exercises. Lillian so has a question. Yes. Hold on, Lillian. It's on mute. Okay, <laughs> Lillian. Lillian, are you crying? Don't cry, Lillian. I think Lillian is laughing. Oh, okay. We're going to lower the hand. <laughs> That's good. Okay. 
All right, you guys. So basically, that's the reason why we do those breathing exercises. Okay, so there's a there's a logic behind the madness. All right. So before we go into our uh, little vocab review, I'm going to do a little mindfulness exercise. It's not going to take more than one or two minutes. So for those of you who are comfortable, you're going to ahead and close your eyes. If you don't feel comfortable closing your eyes, you can keep them open. But it's very important that everybody be seated in a comfortable way. Make sure both feet are planted on the ground. Don't cross your legs. Both feet are going to be planted on the ground and your arms are going to be resting on the arms of the chair. Or if your chair doesn't have that, then you're going to simply put your arms on your lap. But we're going to make sure that we're comfortable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to inflate the stomach and then the chest and then we're going to deflate. Very important before we begin, make sure that you focus on your breath going slowly. You're not going to do and then no, everything happens through the nose and it happens slowly. So here we go. We're going to inflate the belly in. Now the chest. Now we're going to We're going to do that two more times. Make the belly big. Now the chest. Now four. Four seconds. One more time. Inhale. Now the chest. Now exhale in four. Very good. Now we're going to do a little grounding exercise. I want you to breathe in as you feel your feet and breathe out, just notice how your feet are feeling. As you breathe in, I want you to focus on your calves. As you breathe out, notice if they're relaxed. If you notice any tension, you're gonna use the exhale to relax it. Now we're going to inhale, focus on your knees, exhale. Inhale, focus on your thighs. Exhale, be mindful of how your thighs are feeling and relax them if there's a need. Now inhale, we're gonna focus on our buttocks. Here we go. Exhale. Inhale the pelvis. Just feel your pelvis, exhale. Notice if there's anywhere you can let go. Inhale, we're gonna work on the abdomen now, on the belly, here we go. Exhale. Now we're gonna do the chest, inhale. Exhale. Now we're gonna work on the back, try to scan your back to see if there's any tension, here we go. Exhale. Last two, the neck. I tend to accumulate a lot of tension on my neck. Here we go, inhale. Exhale. Last one, we're gonna do the head and the forehead. If you're squeezing anywhere in your forehead, you're gonna try to relax it, inhale. Exhale. Okay, beautiful. Now we're getting nice and oxygenated. We can really learn, absorb information. Thank you, Virginia. I feel great. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and work on this list. For those of you who already know the vocab, that's awesome. It's always good to review it. For those of you who did not get a chance to study the vocabulary that you're going to be faced with today, here we go. Let me see if I, I can make this larger. Yeah, I'd recommend if uh, on your own computers, if you can go large screen, as large Let me go ahead and can. see if Not I just can you. zoom in. You're as large as you can go, Virginia. Let me see if I can zoom in a little more. Okay, that's the most I can give. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up for about 30 seconds. If you can, I want you to cover with a paper the right side of your screen. So you're going to use a paper to cover the part that is in the target language. You're going to read the word out loud and then you're going to try to interpret it. When you've interpreted, you're going to go ahead and expose it, okay? 
Again, read the term out loud, covering the right side of the screen. Once you've interpreted the term, then you go ahead and reveal it to see if you got it right or wrong and then go on to the next term. I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to do this, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to the next set. Ready, go. All right, you guys, we're moving on to the next set of terms. Here we go. And I'm going to give you another 30 seconds. Ready, go. Well, you guys, I gave you about five seconds extra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go to the next one, the next batch of words. This time, I will make sure to only give you 30 seconds. Let's see if everything is displaying. That was the last batch. Okay. Ready, set, Okay, you guys. Now, I want you to use the chat and tell me why this is a scoring unit. What's the importance of when someone says, a eh, ah, uh, how does that affect our interpretation? Hesitation, very good, Patsy. Very good. Now, what should we do with those hesitations when we're interpreting? Say them as well, interpret them, convey them, always interpret them, include them. Very good, you guys. So you want to make sure you include those. Do not omit those because they tell you about the witness's state of mind. It makes somebody less credible or more credible or it shows people if they're nervous, which is very, very important uh, when uh, assessing a speaker's state of mind. It's not just important for a witness. It's also important in medical and education. It's one of the basic things when it comes to interpretation is we want to make sure that it is as similar as possible as if the two people spoke the same language. So if the two people spoke the same language, which JC said beautifully because we have equal right, uh, we have to equal their conversation, very good. So if two people spoke the same language, they could hear each other hesitating. So if a doctor is asking the patient, are you taking your medication every day? And the answer is uh, C, then the interpretation should be uh, yes, including the tone of voice and including the hesitation. The doctor wants to know that hesitation. Same thing happens in any field that you're working in. You wanna make it as similar as possible as if the two people spoke the same language. So don't omit those. And I made it a scoring unit because every language has their own hesitations. In English, we say um, or in Spanish, we say eh. So you want to make sure that you get those, okay? For those of you who speak other languages, we don't get too nervous about the fact that you no, don't know this vocabulary in the other language. You're going to go ahead and interpret into your other language, whatever your language combination is, the language that's not English, and just try to do your best. Remember, you're here to learn the method. So if you don't get this one perfectly, don't stress about it. Okay, next set of ones. And there are less, so I'm gonna give you guys 25 seconds in this. 
Ready, set, go. All right, you guys, let's move on to the next one. We have here some um, colloquial Spanish, which is important to know. Here you go, 25 seconds. Use the chat if it's way too short for you, but I think you guys got it in 25 seconds. Ready, set. All right, you guys, I think there's a question in the chat. I've never heard the word acotejar, somebody from Mexico. Yeah, I never heard the word acotejar before I have this practice either. And this is someone from the Dominican Republic, and they were talking about acotejar la mercancía, which is kind of like to organize it on the shelves. Okay, um, when in this context, that's why the flashcards are so important because they have sentences. That's why it's so important for you to first study with the flashcards or if you're studying on your own, create flashcards with sentences. Because in this context, you'll hear him say, I used to lift weights, but now I had to give it up. So when you say I had to give it up, in this case, tuve que dejar de hacerlo, tuve que descontinuarlo, no volver a realizarlo, renunciar a eso, abandonarlo, suspenderlo, dejarlo a un lado. So it's different according to the context, okay? Hilda says that hincar is to get on your knees. It is. You're absolutely right. It is a colloquialism for getting on your knees. But in this context, hincar is to hurt. And again, this is a Dominican um, uh, witness. So these are the terms that he's using. Okay. And I learn every single day. So here we go. Let's go on to our next batch. And we only have two, you guys. So we're going to go ahead and look at these two. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Okay, very good, you guys. Good job, everyone. I think I had someone um, previously saying they have a question. Um, if, you, if I have not addressed your question, Hazel. Hazel had a question. Hazel, would you like to go ahead and use the chat? Let us know what your question is. Oh, it was about Incar, but it was solved already? I hope so. Dominican. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Good work, you guys. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the actual interpretation. And let me go ahead and share our lab. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. And we're going to go ahead and go into the interpretation. This one is a consecutive one. And we're going to go ahead. Let's see how we're doing with time. Um, all right, this, because we are a little pressed for time, I'm going to go ahead and choose either the decelerated or the normal speed. But if you were studying on your own, I would want you to do both because again, repetition, okay? You'll notice a huge, huge thing. So everyone, go ahead and use the chat, whether you want it to be normal speed or you want it to be decelerated. Let's see what people say. I bet it's gonna be normal. Everybody wants it normal. <laughs> Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead. Ah, let me go ahead and make sure that my computer sound is shared accurately. Okay, share computer sound. Good. Beautiful. Nice. Okay. That's always tricky. Yes, thanks for yeah. noticing that. <laughs> let me just do it one more time. Computer share. Here we go. Awesome. Okay, you guys. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to have your phones ready and you're going to have them ready to voice record. Remember, if you're using our app today, we're not really going to be working with the third step sharing with you guys. We have some security concerns of why we can't share the labs with you. 
unfortunately. So we're just going to be walking you through the third step. So go ahead and don't use your app for now. Go ahead and use your voice recorder on your phone, your normal recorder. And I do want you to use headphones because that allows your recorder to be much clearer. Okay, and I want you to go ahead and use, and then we'll be able to, if you have the type of uh, phone that displays the sound, then you'll be able to skip all the silences. So that's why it's important to connect your headphones to the computer so your recorder won't capture the practice. It'll only capture your interpretation because you'll be hearing the practice through the headphones. If your phone visualizes your sound, then you'll be able to skip through whatever is silence and you'll be able to get to the next chunk. Is that clear, you guys? Okay, perfect. So you're going to go ahead and use your headphones. We're going to do three quick breathing just to get ourselves in the zone, three quick breathing exercises, just inhales and exhales, belly goes first, then chest, then you exhale through, it's all through the nose and everything is happening slowly. Here we go. Inhale, belly chest, exhale all through the nose in four. Second, inhale belly, chest, in four, exhale. Last one, belly, exhale in four. Connect your headphones. Take notes. Start interpreting at the beat. When you hear it, you'll be, you'll be prompted. Here we go. Arbitration. Begin voice recording now. Your practice will begin at the beep in three seconds. Three, two, one. Mr. Mendez, my name is Alex Smith. I'm a lawyer, and I've been asked to arbitrate this case today. As I'm sure your attorney has already told you, The arbitration process is a procedure set up by the court to try to remove some cases from the docket. Before everybody incurs the additional expense, not to mention the extra time spent going to trial. It's mandatory, meaning you have to be here, but it's non-binding, which means my decision doesn't necessarily conclude the matter. Either of the parties can reject my decision today by filing a paper with the court in the next 30 days. If my recommendation is rejected, then the case would proceed towards trial, as if arbitration had never happened. I understand the nature of the accident, and it has already been determined that you were not in any way at fault. So, I just wanted to hear some testimony from you about the injuries you sustained in the accident 
and how those injuries affect you currently. I need you to swear or affirm to tell the truth. Will you swear or affirm? Lo juro. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Sí. Thank you, Counselor. Go ahead. Were you injured in this accident? Sí. What parts of your body? El hombro, la espalda, la pierna. Which leg? La izquierda. Your neck, too. Sí. Did you go for treatment? Sí. Where? Wicker Street, en un centro de terapia. Is that the Wellness Chiropractic Center? Sí. When did you go? De marzo a octubre. Would that be for about seven months? Más de siete meses. What kind of treatment did you receive? Bueno, recibí la terapia manual. Recibí parche eléctrico, parche caliente y esos que van con aguja. Did you have any injections? Me? Sí. Do you know what kind? Eso fue para trabajarme el cuerpo. Eso fueron tres inyecciones que me dieron para dormirme y trabajarme el cuerpo. They did some manipulation under anesthesia. Sí. What parts of your body? El cuerpo, principalmente el cuello, la espalda. Was it in October? Sí. How many times?
eh, tres veces. How long did each visit last? Bueno, yo entraba como a las ocho y salía como a las once. Tres horas y algo. All this treatment for seven months, did it help you? Ayuda a los primeros días, después vuelve a lo mismo. We are now, when was this accident? In March. Sí. How do you feel now? Bueno, tengo dolor en el pescuezo, en la espalda. You mean the pain in the back and the neck still continues three years later. Sí. Now, let me ask you, is the pain constant or off and on? Constante. It hurts every day. Sí. Do you work? Tengo un trabajo, sí. What kind of job is it? Soy dueño de una tienda, como forma de supermarket. Where? 3456 Baxter Street. Okay, have you had any? First of all, did you miss any time from the business because of your injuries? Falté debido a... Sí. How many days or weeks did you miss? Bueno, lo que he tenido, que ir a los doctores y a las citas que he tenido, y ahora mismo está cerrada. What's closed? La tienda. Why? Porque la persona que tenía no ha vuelto a trabajar y yo no tengo a nadie más que me ayude. Did you have, while you were still in the store, after the accident, did you have any problems performing your duties there? ¿Cómo no? Can you tell us what were your job duties before and what problems did you experience afterwards? Sí. 
Sí, ahora mismo. Antes podía acotejar la mercancía. Ahora no puedo. Tengo que pagar para que me acotejen. Tengo ahora la esposa mía que dejó de trabajar para poderme ayudar. Como tengo dificultades moviéndome mucho, ella me ayuda en la caja trabajando. You mentioned somebody you pay to help you with that. Para acotejar la mercancía sobre los estantes. Why can't you do it yourself? No puedo cargar pesado. Y la mercancía que llega son cajas pesadas y no puedo hacer fuerza. Did you do all of that before the accident? Sí. Are you experiencing any problems or are there any activities outside of work that you have had to give up or reduce since the accident? Sí. Tell us. Correr, levantar pesas. Levantaba pesas, jugar pelota, jugaba también al fútbol. How often did you play soccer before? Los weekends. Have you given it up altogether? Claro. What about running? How often did you do that? Dos o tres veces por semana. Have you given it up completely or do you still run? Lo he dejado por completo. No puedo porque tengo problemas en la en eso de las coyunturas de los pies y la rodilla. Soccer, running, weightlifting, any other changes in your life due to the injuries? Como le digo, ver televisión y qué sé yo, usar el teléfono en el hombro. Sorry? Usar el teléfono en el hombro, o sea, hablar con el teléfono enganchado en el hombro. No puedo hacerlo porque tengo problemas en el cuello. Me duele. You mentioned something about television. No puedo ponerlo porque pongo dos, tres almohadas.
Hay veces que pongo dos, tres almohadas detrás de mi cuello y me duele. No puedo ver la televisión con mucha frecuencia. Tell me, any problem sitting or standing for a long time? Eso es para generalmente parado. When we were sitting out there in the hallway, waiting for our case to be called, I saw you stand up and keep standing for a while. I want to know why you did that. Porque me hinca cuando eso. Ahora mismo siento que me hinca la espalda. Tengo problemas en dos discos. Do you alleviate your back pain by standing up? Me ayuda. Ok, I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. That's all for now. You can wait outside now. Your lawyer will be out in a few minutes. Have a good day. Está bien, gracias. Stop voice recording now. This interpreting practice has concluded. All right, you guys. Go ahead and use the chat. Let me know how you felt. Was that easy? Was that hard? Very good, loved it, great, slower than expected. Okay, this is one of our first practices, so it gets um, bigger chunks and faster. Mm -hmm. It was between 120 and 130 words per minute. Very good. Okay, you guys, now we're going to stand up because we've been sitting down for a long time, and it's not good for us to be sitting at the computer without treating ourselves to a little stretch. So I want everybody to go ahead and stretch like you were yawning. Oh, that's good. Very, very good. Now let's go ahead and do some neck circles to the right. Three, four, and five. And then to the other side, one, two, three, four, and five. Very good. Now I want you guys to go ahead and put your arms up, breathe, and then exhale down. Inhale, breathe up. Exhale, down. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale down very good now we're going to work on those shoulders so let's go ahead and put the shoulders up and back and down that's one and back and down if you can go ahead and breathe in and out when you go down and in up and back down very good if we can stretch a little bit those shoulders very very good 
This is where you get to tell if I'm wearing anything from the waist down. <laughs> For those of you who are not wearing anything from the waist down, make sure you don't let us see that. Go ahead and do sway circles. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Last two things we're gonna do, we're gonna do knees and we're gonna do uh, feet. Let's start with the knees. I don't know if you could see that. There you go. So you're going to go ahead. I don't wanna give you guys a show. Here we go. Go ahead and make circles. One, two, three, four, five. Circles to the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Then the other knee. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna do circles with our feet. Right foot. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Other foot. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. It's good to make sure and get up a little bit. Sometimes we sit down for a long time and it can be a little bad, okay? Um, what is the, the lower speed someone's asking? It is between 100 and 120. This is between 120 and 130. And this is um, a shorter chunks. You will be working with longer chunks in the more advanced courses. But as I was mentioning, if you're working by yourself and you have your friend being your DJ, what you do is you take notes when you had enough you put your hand up, your DJ friend is going to turn off. If you're working with free material, of course, it doesn't have the pauses. When the person pauses it, you're deciding how big the chunks are when you put your hand up, okay? And like I mentioned, um, we have shared the ability for you to slow down the practice or speed it up, okay? What kind of headset am I using? I have to say, Brad is our techie savvy guy, but this is uh, Leitner. Can you see how you pronounce, how you spell it? Yeah, I think it's Leitner. Leitner, thank you. Leitner. Oh. Okay, Brad has started sharing what, his screen. What, what equipment is that dog using? <laughs> the witness has requested an interpreter who speaks <laughs> rough. <laughs> I like that, that's awesome. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Okay, good you guys. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the third step and you'll be surprised how many people skip listening to their own interpretation. What is the use of uh, recording yourself if you're not going to listen to yourself? Hilda's asking, how do you slow down the recording? Brad, did you get to share that link with them to slow down the recording? In case Brad hasn't had a chance to do that, if you go to our website, let's do that while you guys are here right now. It's a great opportunity for us to go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and... We'll send it out in the email. Okay. But I do want to share with you guys... Oh, where did it go? Okay. Well, in the email, we'll share you with you guys the technology for you guys to do that. Um, if you go to our website, if you will indulge me, please, uh, I just want to show you guys to see how many resources we have. Uh, let me go ahead and share my desktop with you guys. Okay. So if you go to our website, okay, you'll notice that we have this, if you just go interpretrain.com, you'll notice we have a blog. So you'll go ahead and click on the blog and you'll notice so many free resources that we offer for you guys in the blog, okay? We have terminology, we have court terms, we have um, ethical stuff, site translation, motivational stuff, court vocabulary, federal prep, immigration court. So we have all kinds of uh, stuff for you guys to study with for free. Okay, so we're just giving you tools so you can go ahead and take some tips and use some materials and that's, this is abs you know, absolutely free. And um, 
we're constantly updating it and giving you guys new tools. For example, this, this is what I was mentioning earlier about the free interpreting practices offered by the state of New, new Jersey. Um, they have a test prep and it includes the instructions, audio materials, transcriptions, and grading materials for all for free. We also have the uh, Supreme Court has offered, um, if you go ahead and click here, you'll notice that they have a training practices. They have the cases voice recording and they have the transcripts. Okay, and as I mentioned, the first thing you're doing if you're not working with our material is you're going to go ahead and print those transcripts and you're going to underline the words you don't know. That's your step one. And you're going to, of course, research those terms and then you're going to go ahead and create the tools that you need to drill that vocabulary throughout the day. And then you'll be able to go on to step number two, which is the interpreting practice. If you want to slow it down, you can also find on our blog that that um, material. And then what you're going to do is you're going to listen to your voice recorded interpret interpretation, your performance, and you're going to compare it to the transcript. And you're going to check what you got right and what you got wrong so you can get a score. So this is basically how you're going to work on your own. Okay. Um, that's as to the free practices. And I believe we also have in here um, sample tests, how to get free SIMCs how to prepare, and we also have in here, here it goes, how to control your speed with the interpreter training practice. So if you go to our blog, if you go to interprettrain.com and check out our blog, we will have so many free resources for you guys, okay? Here it is, all right, this is our blog. So check us out. We're always working to empower you guys with all the tools that you need, okay? All right, awesome. Now, it's time to get to the third step. So it's time for you guys to correct your work. So let's make sure that we go where we need to be. And we're going to go to our third step. Beautiful. So we come back out here and we go to our third step. Now, as I mentioned earlier, because of security concerns, we're not going to be able to share this third step with you guys, which we really wanted to do. But the way it would work is you would are either use our app, which is super quick, and you just use the audio code to load it here. It, the app, when you voice record yourself on our app, you get an audio code and you just simply put it there. Or you can go ahead and upload the audio file. I'm gonna do that so you guys get to see how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose from my downloads. Can you, can you also show if folks don't wanna use those two options? Oh, this, definitely, this. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, let me, I'm just gonna show this, this process. Well, let me cancel that and show that. So you can either upload your audio file the way I'm going to show it. So basically you record yourself on your phone and then you email that recording to yourself and you download it. And then we have an audio converter in the course that you'll be able to convert your file. But if you don't have it, you can just go ahead and type in, how do I convert my M4A into an MP3? and then the internet will give you an, a converter. Don't click on anything else except the converting steps, and then you'll be able to convert the file. Or you can use your audio um, app, which is a free app, which will allow you to go ahead and put it in here super seamless, super quick. Or you can skip this step and play and pause your recording on your own device, okay? Which is what you're going to be doing if you don't work with our material, all right? so. I'm going to upload the audio file because I emailed it to myself. It's in my downloads folder. I already converted it into an MP3. Now, this is why we want you guys to uh, take advantage of these tools because we worked really hard. Brad is basically our tech developer and he worked incredibly hard to make sure that this is as seamless as possible. This technology that we've created allows you to listen to yourself, to your voice recorded performance. Anytime you spot a scoring unit, then you can go ahead and click on it. The audio will stop playing. You'll be able to grade that particular scoring unit. And when you click correct, incorrect, or research, your audio resumes. And that allows you to grade yourself without having to handle two different devices, without having to be on the screen and then on your device. Everything will happen in one same spot. Remember, this is the way real tests work. So when you go to a test and you're hearing a practice through your headphones, they already have the transcript in front of them. So they already know which scoring units you have to hit. And they're going to listen to your recorded performance and they're going to compare the transcript to your performance that you voice recorded and they're going to grade each one of those scoring units so we want to make sure that we train ourselves the way regal tests are set up so i've already uploaded my file let's check it out how it works virginia before you start yes 
Um, just want to make sure that everyone, if you hover over your upper right hand corner on Zoom, or you go to the upper part, there's options to enlarge your screen if you're having problems reading the text. Oh, let's see if I can make it a little larger. It's, that's a little better, Virginia. Let me try to zoom in. Thank you, Brad. Maybe that's a little better? Yeah, it is. Okay, okay. Let's go ahead and listen to my interpretation and see how it would work if you did it on our system. Arbitraje. Oh, wait, did I share my, let me just make sure that I do this right. I want to make sure with computer sound. Yes. Okay. Oh, I lost everything. <laughs> okay, here we go. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, one more time from the top. Here we go. Arbitraje. Señor Méndez, mi nombre es Alex Smith. Soy un abogado y me han pedido arbitrar esta causa. As soon as I click on the scoring unit, you can hear the audio stopping. I, did I say arbitrar? Yes, I did. I mark it correct. If I had not, I would mark it incorrect. If I had said something different that doesn't appear up here, I would mark it research. And the system is going to keep your tally. Causa el día de hoy. Como estoy seguro que ya le ha comentado su abogado, el arbitraje... Arbitraje. I could have also said tercería. I got it right. Es un proceso que coordina el juzgado ser juzgado, got it right. Para tratar de retirar algunas causas de la lista de causas. Lista de causas, got it right. Antes que todo el mundo incurra en los gastos adicionales y para qué mencionar el tiempo adicional que se gasta en un juicio. Es obligatorio, quiere decir que usted tiene que estar aquí presente, pero es no vinculante. Lo cual quiere decir que mi decisión no necesariamente concluye esta causa. Cualquiera de las dos partes pueden Parte. rechazar mi decisión el día de hoy al presentar un papel, presentar, tramitar, someter, diligenciar, I got that one right. papel en el juzgado en los próximos 30 días. Si mi recomendación es rechazada, entonces la causa continuaría hacia un juicio como si el arbitraje nunca hubiera ocurrido. Yo entiendo la índole, índole got it right. del accidente y ya ha sido decidido que usted no tenía la culpa de ninguna manera. Very good. Así que yo solamente quiero escuchar algún testimonio de parte suya con respecto a las lesiones que usted padeció en el padecer, sufrir, accidente y con respecto a cómo esas lesiones lo afectan a usted en el presente. Necesito que usted jure o afirme decir la verdad. Jurar o afirmar. Va a jurar o afirmar. I swear. Perfect. So this is how it would work if you guys were working with our platform. If you're not working with our platform, of course, what you would be doing is you would take that transcript that you printed and that you already figured out which terms you underlined and you already researched those terms and you would listen to your interpretation as you're following along with the transcript. First, you would listen to what you said when you see, oh, there's a scoring unit coming up. You first listen, what did I say? Once you hear it, then you stop your voice recorder and then you check it on your written transcript, on your printed transcript, correct or incorrect, or if you want to research it further. Okay, and then you would go ahead and continue doing that with each one. I think we have a question. Okay. Um, yes, our platform on our labs. So we offer labs to prepare for the state exam. We also offer labs to prepare for the federal exam. And we also offer labs for people who are just beginning uh, court interpretation and they're new in the field. And it's a very complete program. But we also want you to be able to study on your own. And we're about to launch soon uh, labs that are all English. So you can go into any other language if it's not English, Spanish is not your language combination. Okay. So we will send you guys all the information. You can check it. You can check it out on our on our website. All the information for our labs. All right, you guys. Okay. So now it's time for you to correct your work. 
what I want you to do is I want you to play your audio as you follow along here in the transcript. Now, because you're not doing it on our platform, because as I mentioned, we have some security issues, the what I want you to do is I want you to take a pen and paper and I want you to only write down the words that you get incorrect. I don't want you to worry about words that you're getting correctly. So you're going to play your audio, then I'm going to go ahead and click on the unit, and then you're going to write, for example, if you got one wrong, you put one and then an X. That's all you need. And then if two was correct, you don't write down anything. If three was correct, you don't write down anything. If four was correct, you don't write down anything. Let's say five was incorrect, you write five. And if you want the X or not, it doesn't matter because you're only taking note of what you got wrong. Everybody clear on what we're doing? We're going to be listening to ourselves. We might not be able to check the full practice, but I just want you guys to get an idea of how it works. Okay? So go ahead and get your voice recorder ready to play yourselves. Oh, there was a question about what happens if your errors were not the scoring units, but elsewhere. Different states and different entities, um, different examining entities have uh, policies of their own. So some courts might evaluate what doesn't fall in the scoring units, meaning let's say I got removed the cases wrong. They may, they may have like a qualitative part of the test in which the proctor, the evaluator gets to weigh in on things that you're not getting outside of the scoring units, but the biggest component when it comes to your score, when it comes to your final grade, is going to be decided by the scoring units. So it is the score units that count the most. As I said, some entities might take into account other stuff, how well you recover from a mistake, if you don't get the exact message, but you said a ballpark meaning, if you're not hesitating, if you're sounding confident, all that good stuff, if you're culturally getting all those nuances. But most, most exams, the biggest part of their score are the scoring units. Okay, that is an excellent question. Thank you so much. Okay, here we go. Get your voice recorders ready. I'm going to try to go along with you to, so I can show you what are the options and I want you to keep track on your pen. Here we go. Play your recording up to arbitrate. arbitrate. Here we go. Check out if you said this. Check out if you said this. Arbitraje. Señor me Okay. Let's see. Okay, so does everybody get a gist? We're just going to do this paragraph because it's really difficult to correct this work if we don't if we don't have the platform, okay? But again, if you were working with a written transcript, you'd be listening to yourself, follow along, following along with the transcript and getting, making sure you're keeping track of what you got right and what you got wrong. On our platform, you'd be doing it like this. Um, I think the last thing we did was court. Can someone use the chat? Remind me of the last thing we corrected was court. I think it was the word court as far as we got. Yes. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and keep playing. Here we go. Court, move on from here. I mean, This me know. Nombre is Alex. Smith. So you know what
abogado y me han pedido arbitrar esta causa el Sorry, let me go ahead and check the chat. Okay. One more time. You know what, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and come out of here so my voice recording won't be in the way. Go ahead and go back here. Perfect. Now we shouldn't have the, my voice recording getting in there. Okay, perfect. Everyone can see the screen? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, I think we left off in, oh, could you guys use the chat again? You see your teacher's uh, Start with trial. I think we left off with trial, right? Use the chat if I'm mistaken. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Let's move on to trial. Here we go. Trial. Here we go. Play from here. Here we go. Okay, you guys. So, how did it go? Let's hear the chat. Did you guys see how many mistakes you made? Were you able to keep an accounting? 50-50, okay. Skipped one, that's good. Wonderful. All, all correct, good job. All correct, but one, two mistakes, 80%. Great, good job, you guys. So what would we do once we have corrected ourselves and we realize that we got less than 80%? What would we do? Very good, we would do it again. And you wanna get a minimum of 80%. Now, if you got less than 80%, you're going to go back to step one. And the beautiful thing about the system is that it's going to give you a breakdown maybe Brad can show us the breakdown later on in the class that the system gives you and it tells you exactly which words you got right and which words we got wrong. So we'll see if Brad can go ahead and do that and show it to us when he's done. But the important thing is that at the end of the day, we are going to have, oh, Brad did it already, awesome. So check it out. In this practice, can everyone see the screen? Beautiful. In this practice, we have 46 scoring units. And because you, you go ahead and uh, graded yourself, the system is going to tell you exactly which words you got right and which words you got wrong and which words you wanted to go ahead and research further. So in this list, we have, I think Brad didn't mark any wrong. <laughs> we all got it right. We were the perfect interpreter in this scenario, which happens sometimes if you put in the work. Let's go ahead and look at the bottom of the screen all the way down. It's going to give you, as you see, a breakdown. Thank you, Brad, of all the words. In this case, hey, you got 100%. If we had checked whatever we got wrong, you would get an actual score at the end of the day. And then when we're down here, you're going to do a little um, uh, fill in the information. In this case, we have an arbitration. The date comes on automatically. How many times you tried the lab? In this case, let's say one, but let's say it was three, that's fine too. So we're going to be able to see if we did the practice repeatedly or not. Then in this case, we're doing a consecutive practice. 
and it had maximum 20 to 25 words. It didn't have the long ones that we have later on, and it was a normal speed. And then you're going to do a self-evaluation. As I mentioned earlier, many tests take into account some qualitative measure. So it's not just quantity of which scoring units you hit, you hit. They take these things into account. Many exams, if they do the qualitative part, they take into account your overall accuracy, not just in the scoring units, your completeness, if you're skipping things or you're getting everything, if your terms that you use sounded natural in the target language, not like a contrived interpretation. If your grammatical and syntactic adaptations are on, on point, if you sound the way you should in the target language, if you're fluid or you're hesitating, if your self-corrections are smooth, of course, if we make a mistake, we say interpreter correction, we correct ourselves and we move on. So it would be, let's say for corte, I said kirte, I would say kirte, interpreter correction, corte, and move on or juzgado and whatever and move on. We also want to have a poker voice. We want to sound like we know what we're talking about. We want to have a good volume, a good pace. Remember when you're interpreting in the consecutive and the sight mode, you determine the pace in your interpretation. And then we make a comment to ourselves, be more confident, own it. Very good. We're going to go ahead and correct before we submit. Okay, that's perfect. Arbitration came out with two T's, but that's fine. And then we have all of our beautiful scores. Thank you, Brad. This is wonderful. It tells us the date. It tells us this was a consecutive normal practice. It tells me my self-evaluation was 8.3, what we got to work on, be confident and own it. And finally, it takes us, it takes, if we go a little lower, it tells us our vocabulary score. We can download this as a PDF file. If you don't, if you're not working from our program, of course, I want you guys to always keep track of the the transcript and keep track of your scores. And here you have the final uh, completion, um, certificate of completion with a double T, <laughs> just to give it a little flavor. And then you have your self-evaluation, you have your consecutive, you have the date and you have all of the information and you can print it and keep track of your progress. If you're not using our material, then what you're going to be doing is you're going to make sure you're marking it on the transcript. At the end of, the, the, of your practice, you're going to do, um, a division. So you're going to say if the um, total amount of words I was working with was 38 and I got five wrong, five, well, we can do 33 divided into 38. If someone can do the math for me, 33 divided into 33, I got right, divided into 38. How much would that be? I'm terrible with math, you guys, so I need your help. 33, <laughs> 86, 87, 86 or 87%. So that would be what's telling you, I can go ahead and move on to the next practice I or if it works. this chat in, in high school. <laughs> yes, it's very important. Okay, yeah. so you guys, those are the three, the three steps that we're going to be following. Um, again, Go ahead and check out the, that blog where we give you the free transcripts, tr tr print your transcript, check it out, take note of anything you don't know, underline it, research the vocabulary, and then create your study material. As I mentioned in step one, we have flashcards with sentences, we have audio drills with sentences and silences for you to interpret. You can have the left hand side, right hand side, or in our material, you have the grouping and the quizzes and all that fun stuff. Once you feel comfortable with that material, then you're going to go ahead and do your practice. When you do your practice, I do advise you do a little breathing, two or three deep breaths to ground yourself, be concentrated, and then you're going to go ahead and do that practice repeatedly. If you're studying with a study buddy, you can have them do it consecutively by putting your hand up, or you can go ahead and speed it up and slow it down with that little tool that we showed you. Voice record yourself, and then you're going to listen to yourself. I can't stress enough how important it is for you to listen to yourself. It is when you listen to yourself that you learn the most about your particular style of interpreting. What are your strengths and which areas need development? Are you hesitating a lot? Is your volume not good? Are you sounding confident? What type of grammar stuff are you tripping up with? These things you will not be able to notice, I promise you, while you're interpreting because your brain is way too busy interpreting. So you have to then listen to yourself. Listen to yourself as you compare with the transcript. Keep track of what you're doing. Keep track of what you got right and wrong. And then you do your math. 
and you realize how many scoring units you got wrong, you can focus on those specific scoring units that you got wrong. If you go back to step one, you don't have to study everything. Just study those scoring units and repeat step two and three until you get it. Is that clear to everyone? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Do we have Tony with us or he won't be with us today? No, Tony's not going to make it today. Okay. He'll be with us next time. Next time, Tony's going to be sharing some stuff with you, with you guys. Okay, so I'd like to take some questions now. Does anybody have any questions about the process? We could, we could raise some hands too. Okay. Okay, next class, what we're going to be covering is... Somebody asked long consecutive. Yes, we do have uh, long consecutive labs, which uh, go from 55 to 65 word chunks. But if you're working with a study buddy, you're just going to not put your hand up until you've had enough. Okay. I think I'm better at simultaneous than consecutive. When would you use consecutive? Um, consecutive interpretation in court is used when you have witness testimony. Anytime the witness is testifying, everything the witness says has to be done in consecutive. That's the best way to do it. It doesn't interfere with the record. If the record is voice recorded, my voice is not going to interfere with the court user's voice, with the witness's voice. If we have a stenographer, my interpretation is not going to interfere uh, between the witness testimony and my interpretation. So we have a clear record. So we take turns. When we're working in court, also if you have one-on-one -on -one interviews, you could do the consecutive mode. When you're working in the medical field, it's mostly consecutive. And in many other fields, the consecutive mode is used very often. Okay. Um, some people are saying they end up lightheaded because they, they switch, they, they are leaning over too much. If you can be mindful of your posture and your breathing, that helps a lot. Okay. Um, uh, some people do questions in the simultaneous mode. I have noticed that uh, for that to be successful, you have to have the proper equipment meaning you have to have your court user hooked up with headphones. So when you are interpreting the question from the attorney simultaneously, you're not interfering with the record. Your voice is not going to be captured by the mics and your voice is not going to be disturbing the stenographer who has to take note of those questions. So if you are going to do those questions simultaneously, you have to be, you have to have the right setup, the right equipment to do it. If you try to do that without the proper equipment, you can really piss off a lot of court reporters who need to be hearing the question. So make sure you equip yourself with what you need. I prefer the consec because I find that Witness testimony is evidence in a court of law, is just as sensitive as a drop of blood, a drop of semen, a weapon with fingerprints. It is just as important. Testimony is evidence. So when I am interpreting, whether it's the question or the answer of a witness's testimony, if it's, if it's a, an examination of a witness who doesn't speak English, I find that hearing the full question gives me the full picture. Even if I have the equipment, I'm not gonna get the full picture of the question until I hear the full thing. So why not give myself an opportunity to make sure I get that question straight? Simultaneous has the advantage of being less time consuming, but the disadvantage of you don't get the full picture, right? You discover things on the go and then you have to kind of adapt it. Whereas consecutive gives you the full broad question and then you can jump in, okay? Um, simultaneous interpreting with the text. I'm not sure I understand that question. Simultaneous interpreting with text. Um, if you are doing a site translation and you have a text that you have to render out loud, the best practice for you is to ask for the time you need to read the text fully, okay? We will be going into site translation next time. And the final session, we're going to into working with your own material without our material, okay? Um, we have a little time, so I wanted to make, to see if you guys want to share your notes. If you can send your notes to homework at Interpret Train, take a picture of your notes and send them to homework at Interpret Train. Brad, can you help me out on the chat to um, copy the name of the address where they would be sending us their notes? Okay, uh, I'm going to send it to info so I can help post it. Okay, okay, great. Um, so you would be sending it to info. Let me um, share that with a group. If you want to share your notes, you would be sending it to oh, one second. I'm... info at 
interpretrain.com. Go ahead and share your notes into this. You go ahead and email it to us and we'll show it to the group what your notes look like, okay? Um, this might have been asked, are you able to send the transcript for today's case? Unfortunately, we're not. We um, have some um, security concerns with sharing our labs and we wanted to, but we, we really have these concerns that we can't share our labs for security reasons. So we won't be able to share the transcript of today's um, work, work. But what we can do once we finish the workshop, for those of you who want to stay a little longer, we'll go ahead and go back to step number three. You guys can take a screenshot of step number three. I'll go ahead and make go screen by screen. And then you can use those screenshots to listen to yourself while you compare it to the transcript. We can do that at the end. Okay. Does anybody want to go ahead and share their beautiful notes? Does anybody have notes they'd like us to see? If you go, oh, Carmen shared her notes. Ooh, oh, let's see through. Carmen's notes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I don't know why it is, but every time I teach a workshop, the Carmen's are such awesome students. They are always participating, always sharing. It's just Martha, something about that Martha, name. Martha, uh, quite a few people now. Uh, oh, good. Let's go see. JC is saying he's been doing Simul for so long that the note taking is not so good. Um, okay, well, we have some, um, last time we shared some free resources. We shared a video on note-taking, two videos on note-taking. If you go ahead and check us out on Facebook, you'll go ahead and see those links to those free videos that will help you with your notes. Ooh, whose notes are these? Ah, oh, these are beautiful. Well, let me comment on the beautiful things I see on these notes. First of all, as you can see, we can go ahead and zoom on a little bit. Beautiful, Brad, thank you. If you notice, the first thing that you'll notice is that she writes very little. I gather it's a she. I don't know whose notes these are. This person writes very little, which means they're very selective. It's very important when you are taking notes not to write down every single word, to choose words very carefully. You're going to choose words that prompt your memory to remember the full message. And that's what this person is doing here. You can see not only is this person choosing which words they do very carefully, but they're abbreviating those words. So for example, they don't write the full word here. This was probably problem. And they just wrote down P-O-R-B. They didn't write down the, third, the full word. Then the word activity, they wrote down A-C-T. And uh, get out of work or not be able to be in work, she wrote a symbol or he wrote a symbol. And for work, W-K. So there's two things happening. First, being very selective in words. You don't see any words on the page like is, a, uh, the, at, on. No prepositions, no articles, only the main words that are going to spark your, spark your memory to the full message. Secondly, the word this person does write down are abbreviated. Thirdly, we have symbols in there. This person is using symbols. Fourth, this person is doing what I call the been there done that line. Do you see those horizontal lines that go from the edge of the page to the middle line? So let me just back up and say it, this person is using the left hand side of the page first and then the right hand side of the page. So as you can see, there's a red line in the middle. So the person went down and, uh, and filled out the first left hand side of the page to the bottom, and then they went up and they filled out the right hand side of the page to the bottom. That's a technique called verticality, and that allows you to organize your notes to be more selective and to implement a bunch of different techniques. One of the tech, oh, can we go back to that one? Because it's such a beautiful page. <laughs> you can see here the recall line. The recall line, she already wrote down the word football. So she needed it again. She didn't have to write it down again. She does a little line. She can use the arrow or not. If you want to save yourself a trace, you don't have to write down the arrow, just the line. And then that allows you to remember the word football without having to write it down again because it's already written on your page. She also does the negatives, which is crossing out. You can cross it out with an X or if you want to save, save yourself a trace, just uh, a slide. Flash. Okay. Another thing that's very beautiful about these notes is they're very spacious. She's laying them out without being too scrunched. When you set yourself out vertically and you give space to your notes, you're going to write less. You're not going to be writing down as much. 
when we are writing horizontally, our brain is trained like, oh, I'm writing like normally would. So then you take down more notes and you don't become selective. And again, verticality allows you to apply other techniques. These are beautiful, beautiful notes. I really like these notes. All this stuff you can learn in the free videos that we are going to share with the class. Beautiful, beautiful. This is the same person, right? Do we have another person's notes? These are beautiful. Let's see if we have somebody else who shared their wonderful notes with us. Elizabeth. Oh, here we go. So here's Eliz here are Elizabeth notes. She's also using a six inches by nine inches steno pad, which is the ultimate tool to take notes. It's the best, best tool to get yourself heard vertically. And as you can see, she scratches things out when she's finished interpreting them. Okay. Also, she's very being very selective with the notes that she picks. She's not writing down everything. Let's look at Danielle. Danielle doesn't have the steno pad, but she is taking very, or he, it's very selective notes. Those are not very clear because of the photo, but very good. And at, at the end of the day, your notes just have to make sense to you. Another person here who's using the six inches by nine inches steno pad. And uh, we can see they're doing the been there, done that line, which is those horizontal lines. When somebody stops talking or you interrupt them, you draw that line so you can differentiate the chunks of speech which th that person is doing. And that's it. I think that's it. Okay. So thank you so much for sharing your notes. Those are beautiful. We are going to be sharing with you again, those videos that are free for you to improve your notes. If you want to work with our materials, then they will be referenced in those. And you can always check out our website. We have five more minutes left. I was wondering if we could use this time um, to go ahead and give the beginners some tips. If anybody wants to raise their hand, and say, what would you say to a beginner who's just getting started? What are the, some of the tips that um, you would use? Oh, somebody made a comment that when you go to take an exam, you're given a sheet of paper that looks much like this. So what you're going to do when you take, when you go to court, when you go to a test is you can go ahead and fold that sheet in half. And that way you have your, you know, left hand side and your right hand side, or you can go ahead and just draw a line in the middle. So you can go ahead and keep going vertically. It doesn't matter what dimensions they give you. Okay. Um, uh, we have some advice here. So practice, 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 and record yourself and listen to yourself. Learn to use symbols. Definitely. Symbols go a long way. I work for the courts, but I take notes using my shorthand style. So I'm studying hard and learning my symbols. Awesome. That's good, good, good. What other advice would you give to somebody who's just gotten started? What do you think you would have liked to have heard when you first got started. Don't take your feedback from colleagues personally. Very good. Read in all subjects, such an important thing. Make your own symbols for your own language. That's very good. Some symbols are neutral because they're not based on um, sounds or language, but on meaning. So you can do it. Be brave. Focus on the message, not on the word. Such an important advice. Focusing on the message will make you a much more accurate interpreter. If you get lost in the words, you'll get you'll lose sight of the meaning. And what we're working with is be, being uh, working on the meaning, being faithful to the meaning. Um, take Virginia's courses right away. <laughs> I love that advice. <laughs> Very good. Um, uh, when these webinars are over, will we receive a note of attendance? No, you won't. Unfortunately, there will be no note of attendance. Uh, learn from your mistakes. Listen to yourself and compare it to the text so you can spot your mistakes. That's how you'll grow. Anything else? Does anybody want to put their hand up and we'll unmute you and you can go oh, ahead and give some advice? There is a hand up. There is a hand. Ooh, whose hand is yeah. up? JP. Oh, JP. Awesome. Let's go ahead and unmute JP. Can you do uh, that, Brad? JP, no, he disappeared. Oh, JP disappeared after raising his hand. <laughs> <laughs> there he is again. There's JP. Oh, cool, JP. Go ahead, JP. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm fairly new. I've been interpreting for about two years. I started about the middle of 2017. And I think the biggest um, advice I can give is just like I was a musician for years, like music or sports, the first thing I think I would have done better is do what we call in music or fundamentals. So for interpreting, it's definitely do those vocab drills. Like they might seem tedious, they might seem dumb. You might say, I know Spanish or 
I know English or whatever your language combination is, but I would really, really take the time to focus on that before you even start interpreting. Um, you can do both. That's, that's a great, great advice. Don't skip step one and you can go ahead and follow the sequence. Step one, step two, step three, and, and do that, but don't skip the vocab. Uh, learning is absolutely essential and I'm still learning and I've been interpreting for a while now and I'm still learning. Thank you so much for that advice. That's really, really sound advice to focus on the vocab. Make sure you get that out of the way. That's your step one. So when you do step two, you don't trip up on vocab. Okay. And I'm still learning vocab. So be ready to learn for the Catherine rest of Catherine has a question. Yes. There's um, a question um, right here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, no, my question was just a comment. Uh, going back to fundamentals. That's what I loved about your course on consecutive. You are not immediately like this is even more advanced than, than your course. Your course starts just with basic note taking and you start talking about the methodology and the verticality and that takes weeks and weeks and weeks and people often go directly to exercise exercises where they feel intimidated by them and then they quickly quit because they think they cannot do it and that's simply because they didn't start with the drilling my other advice would be uh, work on exercises that work on your memory before even taking any symbol so i remember uh Put purposely putting away my pen and seeing how much I can visualize. And at that point, then I just, then it, it, my own memory told me what was really needed to be write, written down or not. That's, those are two great pieces of advice. Thank you so much for the positive feedback, first of all. We really appreciate it. Secondly, yeah, it is absolutely important to drill from the ground up. For sure, for sure. And uh, many of these techniques that I talked about today when we looked at the notes are things that you're going to have to practice to memorize and to, and to be auto so they become automatic. And then the, the tip of memorizing, it's key. Um, before you even want to tackle notes, you want to make sure that your memory can, can, can retain a lot of information. I find that my notes support my memory. So you can work with both at the same time, but if you can go ahead and work with, uh, anything, uh, any sound file and go ahead and stop when you've had enough, when you've heard enough and just try to, um, interpret what you heard, uh, concentrate on listening. That's a great exercise. If you don't want to take a single note, just concentrate on listening and visualize. If you visualize what you're hearing, you will be able to remember much more. You guys, we've run out of time. Um, I really want to thank you guys for being here. I have thought a lot this week about uh, how I wanted to sign off and what I wanted to say. For those of you who want to hear, want to have take pictures of the transcript, go ahead and wait and we'll go ahead and give you those. Um, it's such a delicate thing to talk about the challenges that we're going through right now because everybody's challenges are so different through this period. But I just want everybody to bear in mind that this will end. This is not going to last forever. Some of us are facing challenges that are harder than others. Um, some of us are just finding we have all this free time and we don't know what to do with it. This is a great time to train. Others are finding that they're busier than ever. They have kids who go to online school and they have to take care of that. They have to take care of their own work. They have to take care of home, home chores. So you right now might not be the time to chew uh, another project to, to, to chew more than to bite off more than you can chew. But this is stuff that you can implement later on. And then there, there are those who are uh, going through some financial struggles. We're with you. We hope you're able to get back on your feet as soon as possible. This is stuff that you can start once you get back on track. We're here to support you. Bear in mind that we have a lot of free information on our website, interpretrain.com. We offer a lot of tools. Your most important resources when it comes to training are your time and your effort. If you're willing to put that in, you can get a lot. This might not be the time if you're going through struggles for you to set yourself new goals. But if you do have free time, if you're one of those people who have even more free time than you had before. Hey, this is the time to train. You can train with our material. You can train with your own material. Next session, we're going to be talking about site translation. And then the final session, we're going to be looking at how to work with your own materials. We really thank you guys for being here. We wish you guys the best during this time. Bear in mind that there will be a lot of work once this is over. So go ahead and stay sharp. And we really appreciate your support. Thank you guys so much, everyone. Virginia, you, uh, you mentioned you want to uh, post the transcript. So Yes. Uh, can we take? Yeah. Yes. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and share. This is going to be my first That's for those. Perfect. This is going to be my first one. So I'm going to give you guys three seconds to take a screenshot. You can take a screenshot on your phone or on your computer. 
Hold on. Let me get my Polaroid out. <laughs> Two, three, one. Moving on. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. Giving you guys five seconds for this one. Beautiful. Let's move on. Five seconds. Okay, next one. Very good. Next one. Very good. Next one. Awesome. Next one. Beautiful. Next one. Very good. Next one. Beautiful. Next one. Excellent. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. It, we will be sharing this video. So if you want to pause the frame to go ahead and compare it to your work, go ahead and do that. We look forward to having you next class. Thank you so much for being such an awesome group. And if you do have extra time, go ahead and push the accelerator. If you're going through a lot right now, hit on the break. This is the knowledge that you can use later on. Be very good to yourself. Be very generous with yourself. Don't demand too much of yourself right now. If you have a lot on your plate, this will end and we will all get back to uh, normalcy. Okay, you guys, mwah! I love you guys so much. Thank you for being such a great group and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, everyone.